Welcome to episode number three from chapter four. And this very important episode is going to go over niches. This is a really important concept. So you really want to make sure that you pay very close attention to what I'm saying and make sure you write down everything that you need to do in your notes. And this could possibly be one of the episodes that you may want to watch again before you take your test. So let's get down to business. All right. Now, the first thing I want you to know is this key idea up here at the top. Ecosystems are shaped by biotic and abiotic factors. Now, biotic factors are all of the living things. Remember, bio, that simply means living. We've gone over that before. Okay, so these are all the living things that an organism is going to come in contact with. So think of like food chains and food webs, all right? So uh, an animal is going to come in contact with the other animals who are trying to eat it and the animals that it's trying to eat, especially if it's a carnivore, okay? If you're a plant, you're going to come in contact with other plants and the animals who are trying to eat you, okay? Also, the animals who are trying to pollinate you. So these are all the biotic factors, all the living things you're going to find in an ecosystem. The abiotic, remember, if you put the A in front of here, this means non. So together, these are the non-living things that you're going to find in there. So this would include the climate, the weather, the soil type, uh, the water available, et cetera, et cetera. These are all the non-living things that an organism is going to have to deal with within this environment. Okay. Now, here's the second key idea. So let's put a one right here, and we'll put a two right here. The abiotic factors and the biotic factors in which an organism lives, that's the habitat. So think of the area where it lives. And in that area, it's going to have abiotic factors like rocks and soil and, and weather, etc. And there's also going to be some living things that it comes in contact with. Together, that makes the habitat. So very, very important concept. Make sure you understand what a habitat is. All right. Now, what's the relationship between a habitat and a niche? Well, I really want you to think of it right down here. And let's go with this color. All right, let's try Let's try red. That'll work. Okay. Think of the niche as the job of the organism. Oh. And I want you to think of the habitat as its address. Now, we're going to get to the full definition of niche here in a second. But I want you to pay attention to tolerance. This is the full range of environmental conditions that an organism can, can survive in. Now, all organisms have their optimum. But the optimum is never always available. So sometimes you've got to be able to handle really warm weather, really, really dry weather. And on the opposite, you may have to be able to handle really windy or really rainy weather. And you've got to be able to tolerate that. So that is also going to help shape its habitat. If it can't tolerate the habitat, then that organism cannot live there. All right, so I want you to pay attention down here to the full definition of a niche. The full range of physical and biological conditions in which an organism lives and the way in which the organism uses those connections. Okay, That's the book definition. You want to make sure that you know this one because that will be showing up on tests and quizzes and et cetera. But for a keep it simple stupid version, remember that's its job. And its job is to use the range of physical and biological conditions to help survive. Okay. Okay, very important slide here. You notice it's got all these colors in here. Make sure you pay attention. You need to know this stuff, especially these guys and this one right down here. Okay, now three things you want to know about niches. Number one, the niches within an ecosystem are limited. There's not enough space to go around. There's not enough resources to go around. Now, because of that, you're going to have some competition. Now, Competition for these limited resources. Remember Thomas Malthus. There's not enough resources to go around. There's going to be competition. That greatly shaped Charles Darwin's idea of survival of the fittest, or in other words, natural selection. So when it comes to niches, we have what is called the competitive exclusion principle. Okay, really important. Make sure you, you write this stuff down. Make sure you're paying attention. And this stuff in blue is the definition. No two species can occupy the same niche. Therefore, there's going to be competition. Now, nature is not soccer and it's not t-ball. There's no ties and not everybody gets a trophy. There's distinct winners and losers. The losers either have to move 
or they go extinct. The winners, those who have the best adaptations and can reproduce, they get to occupy that niche. So the competitive exclusion principle is almost another way of saying natural selection comes into play because natural selection is going to decide who the winner of that niche is going to be. All right, now we've got two concepts that come into play when we have the competitive exclusion principle, and these are fundamental niches and the realized niche. The fundamental niche, as it says right here on your screen, this is all of the possible niches that an organism can live in, okay? Think of a tree. You got from the bottom of the tree all the way up to the top. If this bird or this squirrel or other animal has the ability to live in any part of this tree, that's its fundamental niche. The realized niche is the actual niche that it occupies. So let's say we have two birds competing for the top of the tree. The competitive exclusion principle says only one of those two species gets to occupy that niche. Uh, the other organism is either going to have to occupy the bottom of that tree or it's going to have to move to a whole new forest. All right, I've got a great classic example to show you of this, and it deals with barnacles. Okay, barnacles are organisms that create, the, create this shell, and then when they're underwater, excuse me, <coughs> when they're underwater, basically this little um, feathery fingers come out, and it grabs food. They're kind of filter feeders, okay? So this one here is open, and these are what they look like when they're closed. All right, we have two different species. One is called Chitholomus, that's this guy up here, and one is called Balanus, that's this guy. I want you to pay attention to this area of the picture right here. Chitholomus, which is this brown one, its fundamental niche is the entire tidal zone. The low tide area all the way up to the high tide. It has the ability to survive on this whole part of the rock. Now, Balanus can only survive on the lower two-thirds of the rock. All right, so its fundamental niche is from here on down. Now you'll notice because these fundamental niches overlap right here, this is the area of competition. And the competitive exclusion principle says no two species can occupy the same niche. Now, Balanus must have some ability to be able to outcompete Chitholomus in this area. So that creates realized niches. Chitholomus gets the top third of the rock, and Balanus gets the lower third. Competition, natural selection, and the competitive exclusion principle has created these realized niches. All right? Very important concept. This is a classic example. I've seen it in all of the textbooks that I've had the pleasure of use over the last 20 years. So make sure you understand this concept between a fundamental niche and a realized niche. Fundamental all the available niches that you can occupy, for example, for Chisolomus, all the way up and down the rock. It's realized niche is the top third because it gets outcompeted by Bolanus. Competitive exclusion principle. All right, that's going to end this episode. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.